Do you know the 10 simple rules to fly your drone for fun? Well, let's take a look. Rule number one, you have to fly your drone strictly for recreational purposes. Now this might sound pretty obvious, but this is all about the intent of the flight with recreation being the key. Now flying to record your kids and share with the family, that's recreational. Flying for a monetized YouTube channel, that is not recreational. This requires to follow another set of rules called part 107. More on that at the end of the video. Now, flying as a volunteer for your local search and rescue group, also not recreational. Donating your time to record aerial footage for a business or your church, again, not recreational. So if you decided your flight is recreational, keep watching the rules, otherwise skip to the end of the video where I talk about part 107 operations. Rule number two, you have to follow community-based organization guidelines. Yes, that's a mouthful. Let's talk about what is a community-based organization or a CBO for short. CBO is a non-for-profit aviation group that sets safety guidelines that are approved by the Federal Aviation Administration. Now you can find a list of current approved CBOs here in the video description. Each CBO has a slightly different set of rules to follow. And no, you don't need to join or pay the organizations to follow their rules, but you do need to select a CBO before you fly. Now we recommend flight test community associations Association, FPV Freedom Coalition, or even STEM plus C. Rule number three, you need to maintain visual line of sight. Now, visual line of sight means that you can see your drone at all time without aided vision. Now, you don't need to stare at the drone per se, but you do need to make sure that you can avoid other aircraft or avoid flying over people. Now, you need to be able to see the aircraft, able to see being the keyword. If you fly an FPV drone, for example, or a racing style type drone with goggles, then you need to have a visual observer co-located near you to perform these duties while you fly. Rule number four, do not interfere with traditional aircraft. And I hope this goes without saying, but I'm a traditional pilot as well, so I'll say it. Steer clear of airplanes, helicopters, balloons, gliders, anything that flies pretty much. Uh, drones are at the bottom of the priority list when it comes to right of way. Uh, this is especially true when you're flying near airports or helipads, pay extra attention. Uh, be sure that you do not interfere with or fly too close to other aircraft. Rule number five, you need to get authorization to fly in certain type of airspace called controlled airspace. Now, airspace is divided into different classes in the United States, some of which require approval to fly in. We're gonna do this through a program from the FAA called Lance Program. Now, you can use a free app called the Air Aware app to verify that the airspace near you is good to go and that you can get approval within seconds. Now, if there is airspace that requires approval, it will show you how high you can fly with that specific approval. Now, it's also going to show you if you're not allowed to fly in that area at all, which happens in some cases. Now, the apps also contains a ton of tips, checklists, free education, content. We even made a video right here that you can look at in order to learn about all the different features available. Rule number six, we're almost there. Fly no higher than 400 feet above the ground. Now, 400 feet is the maximum altitude above the ground that you can fly your drone under recreational rules, even if you're close to buildings. Now, you may have heard from other people that you can fly over a building by 400 feet. That rule actually does not apply to recreational operations. Now, remember, you have to follow the terrain as it goes up up, but also as it goes down in order to never exceed that 400 feet above the ground. And of course, if you're flying near an airport, you cannot fly any higher than the altitude that you were approved for. Could be 200 feet, could be 100 feet, could be even 50 feet. Now, you might be wondering, why is it that you cannot fly any higher? Well, because other aircraft are gonna be flying there, manned aircraft specifically. And yes, helicopters can fly lower than 500 feet and airplanes can fly near airports way lower than 500 feet when they land. So keep an eye out for them, don't hit them. Rule number seven, take your trust test. Oh no, you're gonna say a test. Well, not really. Uh, this is a free training that's provided by the FAA through a bunch of approved providers, such as ourselves. Uh, it covers topics that you need to know before you fly. Now, TRUST stands for the Recreational UAS Safety Test. I wish the last T stood for training because that's really what it is. Now, at the end of the training, you will get a TRUST certificate and a number on it, print it, save it as a PDF, whatever you want to do, but have it available to the FAA or law enforcement in case they ask for it. 
The trust certificate is actually valid forever. There is no minimum age for it, and the trust provider are required by federal law to delete your account after you get your certificate. Now, the training takes about half an hour. It's not a very long course. You can head over to trust.pilotinstitute.com to get yours done. We actually have provided more trust certificates than anyone else in the country. So if you ever want more information on this, we also made a, a course, a free course, called Recreational Flying Made Easy. I'm gonna put a link down in the description right here. Uh, it's gonna be in more detail than trust with cool videos, so make sure you go and check it out. And as I mentioned before, this test is 100% Free. Rule number eight, you have to register your drone with the FAA. Now, drones that are over 0.55 pounds, that's half a pound, or 249 grams, must be registered with the FAA. Now, the registration cost is only $5. It's valid for three years. It's valid for all of the drones that you own and fly recreationally. So you'll get one number for all your drones. The place to do it is called the FA Drone Zone. We're gonna put a link down here. Now, if it's not a .gov extension, you're in the wrong place. Be careful because there are companies out there that pretend to be the FA or take ads on Google to take your money. Uh, if you're about to pay more than $5, you're in the wrong place, okay? You also need to mark your drone. You can use a marker, you can use a Sharpie, uh, your favorite label maker. We also have free stickers available, pilotinstitute.com slash free. We'll send you a set free of charge. Rule number nine, remote ID. Speaking of registration, if your drone requires registration, it also needs to be equipped with remote ID technology. Now, this is a piece of equipment that's gonna be in your drone or on your drone that is going to broadcast the location of your drone to other people in the area. Uh, most of the newer drones are required to have remote ID installed when they're sold, but there are older drones that can be compliant using a module, which is a separate piece of equipment. Now, be sure to check for remote ID compliance before you purchase a new drone. We actually made a video right here in depth that is going to show you how you can figure out if your drone is compliant. All right, and the last rule is rule number 10. Don't operate your drone in dangerous manners. Now, this might be obvious, but stay away from law enforcement activity, wildfire operation, stadiums that have games like the NFL or the Super Bowl, for example. This is gonna be very costly if you fly in that area. Now, don't fly in Washington, D.C., National Park, and many other areas. Uh, the course I mentioned earlier that is free goes over these restrictions in more detail than I can in this short video. And of course, don't fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol, that's just not a good idea. So as long as you meet all the requirements on this list, you qualify to fly under recreational rules. Go out, have fun. But if you miss one of these or any of these in the list, you no longer qualify for recreational rules. You instead need to fly under part 107 rules. Now you see, the 10 rules that we talked about are designed as a carve out of part 107 rules. It's an exemption. And so if you don't qualify for the exemption, you revert back to the part 107 rules. And in order to do that, in order to fly under part 107, you need to take a 60 question exam in person with the FAA and score at least 70%. The test covers topics like regulation, airspace, charts, aeronautical decision-making, weather, emergency operation, aerodynamics, and then a few others as well. Now we've trained nearly 100,000 people to do this. We know how to do it. So you can head over to pilotinstitute.com to learn more about how you can become an FAA remote pilot, and then I'll see you there.